Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am so happy to be here. I am so happy to see all of you. So um, it is Thursday, June 8th, 2023. Um, it's 7.15 p.m. Eastern time. So this is 15 minutes earlier than I would typically go live. Um, my regular schedule is Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on Thursdays, I go live at 7.30 p.m. Um, I have recently had to make some adjustments to my schedule um, to accommodate summertime um, just because of a, a circumstance and everything that had been happening with my son and um, at school. And basically we had to take him out early and it's just, it's been a whole thing. <clears throat> so with all of that said, um, modifying the schedule, it, it is, I believe, temporary but I do appreciate everybody's patience while I have to sort of modify what I'm doing. Um, I, fingers crossed, I hope I'm going to be able to go live on Sunday as well. I am planning on it. Um, my mom is supposed to come out and be here, which we're so, 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 so happy when she visits. Um, and so if we are able to do that, then I will go live on Sunday. I will give you all a heads up on my email. Um, if you're not already on my email list, um, I would definitely recommend joining. Um, if you do want to get the updates and things like that about everything that's going on, on. Even my emails um, have been slightly modified and a little bit slower than what they would normally be. Um, and again, I do appreciate your patience on that. So tonight we're going to be making um, just a simple pretty card with something called the Darling Details Bundle. Um, so let me show this to you. Okay. And because um, things have been very unpredictable around here, I'm going to kind of deconstruct this. I actually haven't glued it together yet <laughs> um, so that I can show you all the pieces and the steps just in case I have to leave the live early. I'm really hoping that I can complete this live as normal, but um, this is the card that we're going to be making. And I'm going to be showing you um, the Darling Details Bundle. So this is... Um, what I like to do is kind of make these little charts that show you all of the pieces and the dies cut out um, because this one in particular does have so much detail to it that, um, and I'll, let me make this big for a minute and we'll pop back to me in just a second. So let me see if I can make this big. Um, so Darling Details is an absolutely gorgeous bundle in our annual catalog. Okay. So um, this, I, I have really been wanting to work with this and I've really been wanting to make some projects for you with this. And I'm just now starting to get into it. And I do have a lot of updates for you guys, but let me just show you this first so that you understand what we will be working on in the live tonight. Um, this is the bundle. And then, um, the, of course the actual dies are right here, but I just figured it's easier for you to see all of these lacy details here. So we'll come back to this in a minute. But it's this bundle that basically made this card. And you see how it's slightly crooked? It's because I haven't glued it down yet. Isn't that hilarious? So everything, um, <laughs> I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Let's put it that way with the crafting right now. And I really, really need some crafting with all of you right now. That That's what I can say to you. I The importance of a hobby, in my personal opinion, it's just I, I need it in my life. And, you know, maybe you guys agree. I don't know. Um, but that is just something that I can tell you going through the intensity that I've been going through lately. I really need my craft time. Okay. So, um, let me bring it back to two shot here. Okay. <clears throat> so let me do my official introduction just in case it's your first time here. Oh my gosh. If this is your first live with me, um, leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, I, I'm not usually this scattered. Um, but wow, uh, it's, things have just been so crazy and so intense. Um, summer trans transitions for Connor um, can be tough. Um, my son is autistic and um, whenever there's a big schedule change, uh, there can be quite a um, situation with transitioning. And that is what we are going through right now, but we're, we're improving, we're doing better. 
Um, and like I said, I am hoping that I can get through this live. But if, if it is your first time here, I'm so happy to have you here. And hopefully things will go back to normal soon. So my name is Melinda Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I am going to give you um, my blog um my blog address should i say i was going to say email address and i know that's wrong so you can find more information about the projects that i make on my blog at stampingwithheart.blogspot.com um i usually run one day late um the live happens first we make the project together and then i put the details up on my blog the next day so i will expect to have um all of the details and information up on my blog tomorrow for tonight's card. Okay, so that is that. So if you need to find out more information, um, you can go to my blog at Stamping with Heart, and my last name is spelled H A R T um, dot blogspot dot com. And I'm starting to see some comments, so let me just check those out. Hi, Teresa, how are you? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jackie. Um, Hi, Joan. Hi, everybody. Oh, and thank you so much for sharing, Jen. That's so sweet. All right. So, oh, thank you, Kathy. She says big hugs. I'm so happy to have you guys here. I can't tell you how much I miss doing two lives a week. I was like, what can I do? What can I make happen so that I can get that second live in? Because um, I don't know if you guys remember Must See Thursday. I don't know if you guys ever watched, you know, Must See Thursday back when it was a thing. Um, but that's how I feel about my lives. I feel like it's like a must do lives Thursday. Like it just, it feels right to me. And I was talking to Patrick and I was like, if you can just take him for a little bit, go for a drive, do something fun. I really, really want to go live and make a card. So that's what they're doing. Um, so anyway, I also wanted to share something else with you. Um, we have, and let me see if I can go back to my big screen here. So before we make this card, oh, and before I get into all of this, let me do this first. Okay, so these are the welcome in dies. I'm going to switch my camera back to the table here for a second. Okay, so um, paper pumpkin, you guys, the June paper pumpkin deadline is coming up. So we are, today is June 8th. If you want the June paper pumpkin kit, you need to be subscribed by June 10th. Let me see if I can pop up the information on that here. Uh, is this it? Yeah. Okay. So if you are looking for the welcome in kit, um, it's going to be really beautiful. Uh, it's going to coordinate actually with one of our suites, but even more exciting, they have a set of add-on dies for the stamp set for this month's kit. And I just checked before this live and they are still available. So we have three dies right here. I was hoping to do some alternates and try to work with these before the kit came out, but I just did not have the time. I'm sorry about that. Um, but I think as someone was telling me that this looked like a fishbowl. Was that you, Kathy? We're going to have to make a fishbowl out of this. Um, but regardless, if you are interested in those welcome in dies, that is a purchase that you make separately to go with your kit. Okay. And the item number for that would be 163192. You need to be an active paper pumpkin subscriber to purchase add-ons like this one, refills, and then, um, pass kits, things like that. So I am going to take you to the stampinup.com website because we do have some updates to go over here. But before I get over to the website, there's something I absolutely have to share with all of you. So I am a huge Christmas in July person. Okay. Like I love it. Cannot wait for it. That is just, that is me. Yep. It was Kathy. I thought it was you. We're, we're going to do something fun with that. That's just going to be too cute. Um, so I got this. Let me show this to you. Okay. So <clears throat> Stampin' Up! does something called online exclusives. It's new in 2023. And let me see if I can bring this a little bit closer to you. There is going to be a suite um, called the One Horse Open Sleigh, I believe, the One Horse Open Sleigh Suite Collection. And I actually pre-ordered it and it's here. 
So we're actually going to open the designer series paper together because I haven't even had a chance to open it yet. But can we just take a look at this stamp set? Oh my gosh. So I will be doing a Christmas in July class. I have not released the details of it yet. Hang in there with me. I am working on it behind the scenes right now, along with my um june club so i got the club order i got this pre-order i am in the process of unpacking the box going through all of the inventory separating out the products but i wanted to show this to you guys on the live tonight this is so stunning i cannot wait so there of course it's a bundle so there is a coordinating set of dies to go with this and just to give you um an image of what they're like. I haven't had any chance to make any um, sample cards yet, and I'm sorry about that. Look at the size of this die for the, the horse and the sleigh, which of course is the star of the show of this bundle. So I'm just gonna kind of angle it to try to go edge to edge as best as I can. So from edge to edge, it's five inches. Would you look at that? Okay, so you can see that these little outline ones, the silver outlines cut out stamped images from our stamp set. And then these full silver pieces that you see here, they cut out independent pieces, which means they don't have to have a stamp to go with them. So if we were having like little snow mounds or something like that, it would go with this. So we have that, we have this tree, this little independent winter tree branch thing. And you guys know how much I love nature. So I can't wait to look at the paper. Now, um, let me show you these first. Okay, so these are the embellishments that come with it. They're called the Adhesive Back Snowflake Assortment. And let me just open these. Um, Kathy's saying that hers is coming on Sunday. Oh, Kathy, I can't wait. You're going to love it. And I haven't even looked at the paper yet, and I already know where we are going to love this and enjoy this. Okay, so here are the embellishments. And let me see if I can get a piece of white behind this so that you can see these clearly. Okay. Is that beautiful? Can you see the shine on those? Oh my goodness. I love these. Okay. So you can see there's two sheets here. I'm trying to see how many different patterns we have. So looks like we have three different pattern snowflakes in different sizes as well. So these are our large snowflakes that we have in like the copper color. This looks like copper clay-ish. Um, I don't know if that's actually the color, but we'll find out gold and then white. And then we also have, I would say, I don't know, they're not, I would say that these are very similar in size. So I don't wanna say medium and small, but I feel like that was kind of the thought there. These are a little bit smaller than these, um, but we have a good amount of those, which are really nice and, let me show you for those of you who like to see they are really flat can you see like they're very thin very very flat let me see if i can pull one off here and show you can you see that there's like almost <laughs> it's so thin so for those of you who really don't like the bulky embellishments or you like to mail things and then not cost extra um, these are a good, good embellishment for you. Okay. But these are going to be a lot of fun to work with. Okay. So that's part of the suite. So the bundle, the snowflakes and this six by six paper pack, which I have not even opened yet. So the one horse open sleigh designer series paper pack, 48 sheets. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Um, walk through this with me together and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try to, I tend to like stop and really talk about things, but I'm going to try to move through this fairly quickly just because I'm kind of on a running timer right now. Um, Teresa says, I love that. Always love the flat embellishments. Uh, Teresa says is on her way too. coming Saturday. Can't wait to make Christmas cards. You guys, I am so happy that we are all about Christmas in June and July. You know what? You cannot get started early enough with Christmas cards in my opinion. I, I hate to admit this, but I am somebody who, even when I start early, it's still a struggle for me to get all my cards out. I really need to have like a solid plan. I am, I'm always so embarrassed, the card maker who sends her cards late. Okay, 
So here is our designer series paper. Look at this. Now I love nature scenes. I love all seasons of nature scenes. And so you can see we have sort of an A-frame cabin right there off in the distance with a snowy pattern here. And here's our opposite side, our opposite paper. Okay, now this is going to be available to customers starting July 6th, 2023. Demonstrators can pre-order this paper right now. So it looks like we're going to get four of each pattern. Yes, so we're going to get four of each pattern. Let me see if I can move through this. Here's another pattern here. Let's see what the other side looks like. Perfect for this, you know, our sleigh um, stamped image, right? And we just pop it right into the scene. I think that's like the whole concept there. But this is just absolutely stunning. Oh, my goodness. So let me page through these. I love that it's a gigantic old tree trunk. You see that? You know, a lot of times it's like all these little detailed trees. But that how, how often do we see that? We don't see that a lot in the artwork. So I think that's great. Oh, look at this. I just saw a fox, actually. We were driving through something, a place called Mingo Park, and I saw a little fox running up the hill. This is oh, also gorgeous. We have that woodland theme and element here. So you could do other things. Don't feel like it has to be Christmas, right? Um, this actually kind of has a winter, you know, vibe and feel to it. So it doesn't just have to be Christmas. Look at this. Oh my gorgeous. We're going to, oh my goodness. Oh, you guys, look at this. I am, I'm going slow. I'm so, so, I just cannot help myself. This is stunning. Look at the shadow at the bottom. Can you guys see that? I don't know. How, how are you guys feeling about the designer series paper this year? I mean, are they really bringing it or are they bringing it? Same thing with the paper pumpkin. Like, whoa, you know, just really impressed. This is so beautiful. So here we have a little bit more of a hillside, like a sloping sort of an image here. So they could be going downhill. How cool is that in the sleigh? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're going to be making some cards. We're going to make some cards. We're going to have a fun class with this, I'll tell you right now. So I am absolutely loving this. Got to get the details locked down for my class. But yeah, that is the that is definitely happening. Oh my goodness. Can I bring that close with that staying clear? Yes, I can. Oh my goodness. I just, I love everything about this really beautiful. Um, even, even like our layering sides are unexpected for me. Like that's not exactly what I would think of, but it's going to be so beautiful for Christmas. These winter scapes are just gorgeous. They are crushing it with the nature stuff this year. Oh, I am loving it. Okay, let me try to keep going here. Stay focused. All right, so here we have this pattern here. Love, love, love stripe patterns. Oh, my word. Yeah. I look at how beautiful that is. So my son, Connor, he loves something called ASMR videos where it's like calming videos, you know, and you just see hours and hours of nature footage. And that's what this reminds me of. We watched this one. It's called like Winter 4K. And it's just all of these winter scenes. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Oh, I'm so happy that you have no idea how happy these Facebook lives make me. How happy this product makes me. I needed to see this today. I have to tell you. I really did. Look at how beautiful that is. I'm going to have to make something for Patrick with this because he loves A-frame cabins. It's like one of those things that he really loves. So beautiful. Look at this on the tree, the lights. They really, the details on this are just stunning. <clears throat> I can't even, like, I'm so stuck on the nature scenes. I feel like I'm not even doing justice to the, the background and the layering patterns, but I love them. I love them so much. We have like just a couple of sparse leaves here, it looks like. But we're seeing all different times of day. I don't know if you've noticed that with the tree scenes. Different, like sun, sunset, you know, day, night. We're seeing angled. We're seeing straightforward. We're seeing from the top down. They really, really have some fabulous variety here. I love this. Very muted tones. Really beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So... If you need scenes to go with your one horse open sleigh, 
you sure do have them here. They really, really thought ahead on that. Okay, here's our last pattern. I'm almost sad that it's over. Look at that. So stunning. I love, I absolutely love this. I absolutely love it. I think that this is going to be very popular. I'm just going to say, I don't know. We never know 100%, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty popular. Um, let me tell you what the coordinating colors are on these, just in case that's important to you. I know the customers can't get this until July, but I, I still want to tell you. Okay, so basic black boho blue. So we have some of that new in color here. Cajun craze, crumb cake, early espresso, lemon lolly. So that's another one of our new colors. Lost Lagoon, a returning color. Misty Moonlight, also returning. Mossy Meadow, I knew that was in here. I've been working with Mossy Meadow a lot recently. I'm working on that with my class, my um, club class. Old Olive, Pebbled Path, that's my color of the month. I am loving Pebbled Path, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love this color. Uh, pecan Pie, oh, I just ordered Pecan Pie. I'm so glad I have that. Look, I haven't even unwrapped it yet. It's still in the wrapper. Um, I got the card stuff too because I need it for my June class. Okay. Um, petal pink, pool party, real red, and wild wheat. There's a lot of in colors in this, actually. So that's pretty cool. Um, absolutely beautiful. You guys have to tell me what you think in the comments. I'm going to go back to the comments right now. Um, <clears throat> Kathy's saying, love that DSP. She's going to have to get a couple packs of it. Me too. I, without question. Me too. Um, and she said that is just gorgeous. It really is. It is stunning. Okay. So that is a look at the suite. Now here's why I'm showing it to you now. I mean, for, for the first part of it, I will be doing a class on this for people who, you know, like my, the online classes. But the other reason that I'm mentioning this right now is because Stampin' Up! has a starter kit promotion. They have a special in the month of June. And when you purchase the starter kit, you can actually put pre-order items in it. So that is important to know if you are somebody who likes to get a jump on, you know, Christmas cards and projects and things like that, because you can actually get $155 worth of product, including pre-order product like this online exclusive item. So demonstrators can purchase this right now. And you know, regardless as to whether you're a hobby demonstrator, business demonstrator, whatever you're, the majority of our demonstrators are hobby demonstrators. They like to get the hobby discount. They like to be able to order the products first. When you join in June, you get a $56 product savings. You get free shipping on the starter kit. And if you like this, you can actually put this in your pre-order. Now, one thing with pre-order items is you can only order, I think, one of each thing. Um, but if you would just want to get the stamp set, you could do the stamp set. If you want to get the bundle, you could get the bundle. If you just want to get the paper, you could get the paper. And you could put whatever items you wanted in your starter kit. You customize it. Um, and I'm sorry that I'm shaking the camera, but so, so gorgeous. So that is one of the reasons why I wanted to mention this, because for me, this is a, like this is a thing. Christmas earlier is a thing for me. Um, Connor loves Christmas, my son. He loves Christmas songs year round. We sing Christmas songs all the time. He finds it very soothing. Um, I'm like, I definitely know that you're my kid because you like Christmas year round like I do. I just really, really love it. So really just wanted to mention that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to our card project. But I did say I was going to share and I know why I was going to share. So bear with me, okay? Um, one more thing, and then we'll get to this because <clears throat> I really feel like I want to get you the information so you know what's up. Um, I just haven't had a chance to be present the way that I want to, like I normally am when I get opportunities to be with you live two times a week. Um, that's different, right? <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm taking you to stampinup.com right now. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want you to see this like they sort of have this rotating thing of all of the latest and greatest of what's happening. And I want to share that with you. So number one in June, we have a designer series paper sale, which I haven't even had a chance to get into. But if you want to learn more about that, go to stampinup.com and select that option when you see the rolling screen. The other thing that we have going on, like I was talking about, is that starter kit special starter kit plus. And you can see it right here. 
you can click on that and you can get started with the steps of joining. It's easy to join. If you have any questions and you want to reach out to me, do not hesitate. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. You can email me. You can direct message me. Um, I know it can feel intimidating when you're putting together a starter kit, um, but you might have a very specific list. If you have a long wish list, if you really look forward to seeing catalogs, definitely consider this because the usual savings on a starter kit is $26. This month, it's $56 in product savings, plus the free shipping on your kit. Plus, you save 20% on orders as a demonstrator. Um, you get first access to catalogs. You get first opportunity to order with something that we call pre-order. So Stampin' Up! makes it possible to actually get that pre-order option even in your starter kit, which is so cool. The other thing that I wanted to mention that they just came out with, I don't talk about kits all the time because I do a lot of paper pumpkin, but they came out with this really cute beachy kit. It's called the Boho Beach Kit. Um, let me see if I can select this and if it will show it to you or if I need to share my screen again. I'm going to try to click on this because I don't get to talk about this um, that much. So let me see if I can scroll down to the Boho Beach Kit right here. Okay, so um, you can see here with the, uh, let me see if I can make this big. <clears throat> with the Boho Beach Kit, uh, Stampin' Up! has something called Kits Collection. And these are kits that you can see everything that's in them. You can order as many as you want. They always have this option available on their website, Kits Collection. And then you can shop the kits. Um, you could do kits that have stamp sets, kits that don't have stamp sets. They're different price points. But I thought that the Boho Beach Kit was a really nice summer kit option if you guys are interested in that type of thing. Um, I was just watching a video where Sarah was describing the technique that they used. It was something called an acrylic like pour paint technique. And you can see that pattern and everything like even on the envelopes in that image. And I just thought it was so pretty. I mean, the minute I looked at it, I was like, I would make alternates with that kit if I had that kit. So I just wanted to share that too. Okay, so now we can go back to our table and let's make our card. I know that was a lot, but I do appreciate you um, hanging in there with me through all of that. Just wanted to make sure that you have that information. But um, like I said, I'll send a reminder email out about paper pumpkin like closer to, but just wanted to mention that. So our card tonight is a basic white card base. Um, I'm going to be using Granny Apple Green, uh, Memento Tuxedo Black, and then also um, the, new, the new pink, Bubble Bath. I'm going to be using Bubble Bath for our colors on this particular card. And here you can see that I just stamped the smaller sort of flower and leafy pattern to create a little bit of a border. I love borders on cards. So we're going to be doing that. Then this piece here, um, this is from, this is called um, the Deckled Rectangles. So this is, this has been in our annual catalog for about a year, but it's new to me. So I've been using it a lot recently. So this is going to be one of our layering pieces. This is the largest die in that set. And then we're also going to be using our Darling Details pieces here. So I stamped and die cut two flowers using our bundle. Um, I stamped and die cut two sets of leaves using our bundle. And then I have two, um, what do we call these, stems for our flowers here. And then I actually cut this twice. So I cut the first time in bubble bath to get my outer frame. Then I cut it again in white so that I could put the white frame in with my bubble bath frame. This is something that I really like to do. And then just a note um, was the sentiment that I used from Darling Details and stamped it in black down here at the bottom. So when you assemble this card, it comes together pretty easy. Um, the one thing that I do want to point out with this particular frame, so when you die cut this, you actually have to have the piece pre-cut or you cut around it once you've cut your image. So 
This is actually three and a half by four and three quarter inches to get this very tight edge, meaning um, I wanted a very tight edge around that stitching there. I didn't make it a large layer because I wanted it to nest nicely inside of my deckled rectangle here. Uh, you don't have to have the deckled rectangle. You could just have the bubble bath layer. I just thought it was a nice um, sort of a third color to add to get some contrast in on this. So I wanted to add those little elements, those little pops of black there, okay? So this is what this looks like. If you would just want to do a single flower, you could, of course, do that. You could do your single flower. All right. I'm going to do two on this particular card. So we're going to go and we're going to try to make one together. And if I can finish the card, I wanted to try to use a new set of embellishments that I had, which I think I just moved. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Um, I do this so much. Here they are. All right. And let me know if you have these. I haven't tried these yet, but they're beautiful. These are called the Tinsel Gems 4-Pack. And I was thinking about using this color here, which I think is Lemon Lime Twist. Uh, I'm not 100%, but I just wanted to kind of put that on my leaves. So we'll see if we get a chance to use these tonight. But they're beautiful. I really like these. Um, there's 160 in this pack, four different colors, two different sizes in each color. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. Oh, I'm so happy to stamp with you guys. So let me know what you're up to on this Thursday night. Have you all been um, making some cards lately? Are you transitioning to summer okay? What is new? Um, is anybody going camping, doing anything exciting? I am very curious to hear. Okay, so I'm just going to get my um, basic white card base. This was cut um, five and a half by eight and a half inches and then scored at the four and a quarter inch mark. Hi, Tracy. How are you? What's going on? I, I, I've missed hanging out with all of you. Oh, my gosh. Um, she says she loves the tinsel gem. Three pack are beautiful, too. Yeah, I love the, the tinsel gems, too. I think they're really pretty. Okay, and I can stop this share. I don't know why this is still. Okay, good. There we go. So I'm just going to set this down um, and excuse my, I have to get a new pack of, um, I thought I had it in my last order. I, I change my orders a lot. I'm always changing my mind and putting different things in my cart, but I have to get the larger pack of the paper. I keep forgetting to do that. Um, and they have them in the new in colors now. And I really, that's the one that I want because <laughs> I love the new in colors. I'm like, I don't know if it's because of the club that I'm like totally into it right now, but I really am loving the colors been using a, a lot of them okay so i'm just gonna go with my bubble bath oh i did cut i did cut this deckled rectangle piece ahead of time in basic black so i have that there i should say that and i also to try to save time i cut this piece out um in bubble bath okay so i'm just gonna pull this apart from the die now you are gonna get a bunch of these little um pieces here and you might have to pop a few out. So there is a little bit of work to that, but I typically just tap this like on my table or something to empty it out. You can use your little scrubby tool on your, take your pick tool too, just whatever your, your way is. But we're gonna use that piece too. So I pre-cut that piece. Um, the piece that I did forget to pre-cut was the white insert. So we might have to cut that piece together. I don't know if I have any extras here. I have extras that I always pop on the other side of my die cut envelope. I don't know if you guys do that or not, but I might have to die cut one of those real quick. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're going to have to cut one, which is fine. Okay, so, and do it, that's loose. Yeah. All right, so we'll put this over here. Um, I'm going to start with my little flower and my little sort of leafy sprig here. And that is just to be clear with the stamp set. You know what? I'm probably going to have to move this. Making a mental note to remember that I moved it. These two, these two right here. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to do this one in bubble bath and this one in um, granny apple green. So I'm going to start with the leaves, the leaves, I should say, the leaves. And the way that I was doing this was just kind of angled so I could get just some part of a flower on the edge. 
So instead of going straight up and down, you know, where I wouldn't be able to fit any flower petals, I just kind of did them at, a, at an angle and I just rotated them and did opposite um, sides. And let me stand up for this. Tracy says she's really good. Missed hanging out with you too. Oh, I am. We're, we're, we're getting better. It's, it's, it's starting to improve. And I know this because I'm actually here. So that's, that's helpful. Um, and then you said you're going to be doing some traveling this summer, Tracy, or actually, um, it's winter. Is, is it winter for you still? I think it is. We're at the opposite, um, we're opposite seasons because of Australia, right? We're just different, different seasons. I always forget different times, different seasons, and you're a day ahead. Okay. So I'm just sort of angling side, side, to side, to side. Um, no particular measurement in, or order to this. Just want to kind of get that border going. Okay. I'm going to keep my flowers upright on the bottom as well, meaning I'm not going opposite edge there. It's okay um, if you don't get a perfect image because you are going to have that layering piece over it too, remember? stamp these down just some nice spacing let's see how many that was one two three four five yeah about five one two three four five on the shorter edges and then one two three four one two three four on the sides here okay just to kind of get like a feel for the number and measurements since i tend not to measure those things all right, so here's our brand new bubble bath. I really haven't had that much time to work with this, but so far I am absolutely loving this pink. Really, really soft, pretty pink. And then we're just going to take our little flower. And again, the flower isn't in any particular direction. It's just about kind of creating this little bit of a like border pattern here. And I'm missing a little edge there. So I'm just going to kind of go back over. I did it again. I'm going too quickly. Okay. So I'll slow it down just a little bit. And let's get our little flower petals going. You could also just do leaves or just do flowers. You don't have to do the combo. Um, I particularly like the, the color combo here. All right, and then you can just sort of eyeball it with your layer and see if you're happy with the spacing and if you're feeling like you're getting enough color there. And if you are happy with it, where I have like nice pops of pink and green along the sides, but down here, I kind of stamped a little too high and I'm missing some of my flowers. And because so much of this is covered, I'm just gonna bring in a couple more of my pinks down at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to lay that down one more time and I can see like maybe here, here, maybe over here in the corner. So I'll do here, here, maybe there. Okay, and I feel like that's a nice combination and pop of pink and green just to kind of give us that border edge there. Okay, I don't know why I keep closing them. I'm going to be open them, opening them back up in a second. So that's the first part of this. And then of course we would have our layering piece right here and we're gonna need that white center. Now we could leave the background black and see what it looks like in black. Um, this is what it would look like. Here's one stamp flower that's like finished. So maybe I should do that and see how that looks. And um, we'll do our sentiment in white instead of black. Um, and then that way we'll kind of have like the opposite looks to them. Uh, that could be pretty cool, actually. So let's go ahead and stamp our flower elements here. Let me just get a piece of basic white. Just going to use some scrap here that I have. Okay. And then um, for the outline part of the flower, I'm going to be using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink right here. So glad I remembered to mention those add-on dies for the, um, the paper pumpkin kit. Sometimes I forget to do that. 
Okay, here's the outline. So we're going to stamp two of these. We're going to do two flowers. Just want to leave enough room that I can die cut this out. And so we're going to do one more. Okay. <clears throat> I also want to do my outline for my leaves, which I'm thinking I should do on this separate piece here. And then we'll do our two stems. Uh, what I was doing, because the stems are so thin of a die cut, I was actually just die cutting that first and then stamping after. So you can do that in whatever order. Hang on. Let me redo that. We want to be able to cut that whole thing out. Okay. We're going to need two of those. And then let's go ahead and do... I'm going to get my, here it is, Granny Apple Green. And we're going to take our fill stamp. We'll do the leaves first. Here's that outline. Here it is. Okay. So I'm just going to remove this little detail piece here for a sec. Actually, I have a separate block for that I can use. Okay. <clears throat> So we're just going to take this fill stamp and line this up. Lately, I have been doing my outline stamp first and then my fill stamp. Um, and that's been working out well for me. I really like using a contrasty color like basic black um, so that it's easy to see and line up. So if you do need those tips for two-step stamping, if you don't want to do the second step, just do, you know, either the outline or the detail piece. I think you'll still very clearly be able to see. You could even color that with Stampin' Blends and not have to worry about the two-step stamp if you don't want to or if you're just not ready yet. Now, there's actually a third detail piece for this, and that is this little, um, like, the lined image here. Now, I don't think that you have to. I think that this leaf is really pretty, but I am going to add it just to kind of show it to you. I think it's really cool. Um, I actually really love the look of it. So let me get my memento. I decided to do this in black, um, but you could do whatever color you want. Okay, and the same thing. We're just going to line this up. Stamp. A little bit off on that one. It's okay. We'll live. Okay. One more time. There we go. Nice, good match that time. Okay, so maybe I should do this one more time. Let's see. I'm just afraid if I cut that out, that's going to look weird. So I might have to stamp. I might have to stamp a new one. Yeah, I feel like that's too close to the edge. I think that's going to get cut off when we go to stamp that. So let's do one more down here. Just want to get it right. Okay, that's a little bit off, but totally fine. And then let's do this detail piece one more time. Better. Okay. So we'll go with that. And then I am going to need my granny apple green here in just a minute for my stem. But we can go ahead and cut these first. Oh, and you know what? Let's stamp the insides of our flower. Let's stamp our bubble bath flower here. Okay. Bubble bath, where are you? There we go. All right. And then we have our little fill stamp here. And you can see there is a um, sort of like a faded pattern on here. You can see here um, it's telling you that it's supposed to look like that, where it has sort of different shading to it. 
and see this little notch right up here at the top where there's like this little double petal right there. I'm going to line that up. Okay, let's do that one more time. Did I just get that in there? Hold that. Okay, going for that notch. Oops, I missed a little spot. Let's see if I can redo it. That ink should still be in that spot on my stamp. A little bit better. But I still think that's really pretty. And you can see what it looks like when it dries down. It's a little bit more pink right now than when it's um, dry. Okay. All right. And now let's just do a little bit of die cutting here. I'm going to use my mini to cut these out. If you are cutting this out, you're going to need the bigger, um, you're going to need the full size stamp and cut and boss machine. But for our little flower elements and leaves and pieces, um, you could use the smaller machine, the mini. You can use the mini. Okay, get my plates. My mini plates have seen better days. All of my plates have seen better days. I need to put that on my list. And one thing that I didn't get a chance to tell you is that I have been building up on my tools lately. So I did get the scoring tool and I did get the heat tool. I haven't even had a chance to open it yet. Um, but I'm excited to use those. I'm so happy I finally have them for my collection. Okay, so let me put these plates down here. And then let's see if we can run these through. Okay. With the mini, um, they gave this little tip to uh, try. And again, I'm looking for that little double notch there. So let's see if I can, yep, line that up pretty nicely. Okay, and then I'm also going to put my little stem down and then we'll stamp that after. Um, they gave this little tip to make your plates like an E in the mini, meaning your bottom plate is a little bit out further, your middle plate is in a little bit, and then your top plate is out a little bit further. And that's what I'm going to do here. I should have just taped it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So these out. We'll just set these aside. We're going to do that one more time. Make sure your plates are straight. I have I have more trouble with my little machine and getting my die straight than I do on my big one for some reason. But it does happen with my big machine too. Because I don't have the patience of taking a little bit of what do they call that? Washi tape. Just putting the washi tape down. So we have these pieces here, and then let's cut out our leaves. I'm going to set these two over here so I don't lose them. There's quite a few dies in the Darling Details die set, by the way. Quite a few. And then the update, um, the host cook gifts just arrived. 
So I'll be getting those thank yous and host code gifts out for May. Those who got the earn the host code in May. Uh, those will be going out hopefully by this weekend as well. Well, I can't say that they'll be going out, but I will be working on the class for the um, Pebble Path Club this weekend as well. So hoping to get, I've, I've started cutting the card kits. I just have to um, design and film and then I can get all that stuff packed up and mailed out. So really, really trying to be on my game with that as well because there's a lot to do um, for the third month of club and then also for our Christmas and July class. So I'll be doing a, two classes in July. So that'll be, that'll be a lot between club and then Christmas in July. So we're going to work on that. Okay. Hang on, I'm not doing my E. Goodness. Okay. There we go. I feel like I'm rusty with the die cutting for some reason. Okay. Let's put those down. Now, since I'm not going to do the inner white piece, since I'm going to do the black background, um, let's go ahead and heat emboss our sentiment onto this black piece first. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is. Let me just eyeball this. I'm just going to line this up and then we'll do our stamp here. And you can see I cut it really close on the stitching there. So that three and a half by four and three quarters, you might want to go up maybe just one sixteenth of an inch if you want a little bit more of a base there. Um, or just don't do the deckled edge rectangle. Totally up to you. All right. So I did just a note for the original, but for this one, we have all of these different sentiments. We have happy birthday, hello there, friend, um, just a note like we have on our first card, thank you, count me among the people who are here for you, I love that. Um, you're not here, I hate that, which I don't know if I've ever even seen that word in a stamp, but there you go. So I am going to do, um, how about we do happy birthday? A lot of summer birthdays. All right, and so I'm gonna switch. We're gonna do um, Versamark ink with our, I guess, white heat emboss powder. Um, that's probably the best choice here. I cannot wait to work with that Christmas suite. I have to tell you, I am all about it. Okay, and so I'm just gonna get my little, um, this is our anti-static um, tool. So. You don't have the uh, the heat embossed powder stick to anything other than the ink. So I'm just going to do this on the lower section here. Just get like a kind of a broad area. And then I'm going to lay this down. I'm not going to glue it. I'm just going to lay it so I can put my sentiment here. Okay. All right, and then we'll take this off so that we don't get this all messy. And let me grab my embossing toolkit, my little embossing additions toolkit, and then we'll do our little heat emboss thing. I haven't unpacked my new heat tool yet, so I'm gonna use my old one, but I am so pumped to use the new one. I can't wait. Um, the biggest difference is the Stampin' Up! heat tool has two settings on it, and I like cannot wait to use that option so that I can start heat embossing on acetate. Okay, hang on one second. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm super pumped to do some heat embossing on the window sheets. I haven't tried that yet because my heat tool would melt it. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Okay. So uh, where is my little, I always forget. This is the one thing I always forget to use from my, this is the tweezer. So you get the tweezer, the tray, um, the anti-static tool, and then you get this little brush um, to get any little wispies if you have them. Okay, so that looks pretty good actually. Just gonna do a little bit more. 
powder here. Okay, that looks pretty clean. Okay, so let's go ahead and just heat set that. And then this has a little cap so you could just pour the powder right back in. I'll do that a little bit later, just in case I run out of time here. Okay. A little bit of noise here with the tool. So the great thing about the tweezer is that it keeps your fingers from getting burned. The, um, once this warms up, it gets a little bit hot. It cooks this little powder here. For those of you who haven't eaten Boston before, it's one of my absolute favorite things to do. Um, in parking things. I just think it's like magic. It's the coolest thing. Okay, it doesn't take too long. We're just going to give it a second to cool down, but it really doesn't, you know, take that long. But I have to say that embossing the little additions toolkit is very, very helpful. Okay, so there is that version here. So we can start putting this together now. What I want to do is pop this piece up on dimensionals. So let's do that. And then I will go back to comments here in a few minutes. But yeah, I um, like all my social media stuff, you know, that I usually get to do. I like to do stories on Instagram and, and updates and posts on Facebook and all of that. My email is like my number one thing. And I just really um, have struggled to get all of that done. So I will get back to it. Um, but it might be it might be a month or so before that's possible. So uh, we're going to continue with the modified lives for now. And hopefully we'll get back on track as soon as as soon as I can. But I'm definitely still here. I'm still answering messages. I'm still responding to comments, all of that. Okay, so we're just going to put this piece down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a little wipe to get that um, the anti-static powder off. But that looks pretty clean. That looks pretty good. All right. And then if you would not want to do the lace border, because I don't think I talked about that option yet, you could just do this, okay, and keep it simple that way. So you have a few options there, right, if you were building out your scene with your leaves here. I'm not doing it any justice in this way, but I love this element of it. So let me see if I can get this piece on, but what I want to do is I want to pop out these little pieces. Um, so I'm just going to use, my scissors are the closest thing. So I'm just going to get these little extra pieces out, these little bits out, but you can use your take your uh, pick tool too, using the sharp tip. The pointed tip. Okay. I know that this dye isn't for everybody, but it's just, it's too beautiful not to use it. And I love anything that's bordered, framed, lacy, elegant, floral. It was just calling my name. And I first actually used this with um, Sweet and Precious, which is the giraffe and the, um, the sloth and the, what was the other animal on there is so adorable the the mamas and the babies oh the penguins the penguins okay. all right almost there just gonna come up around this side here Um, do any of you have that little mini vacuum to pick up these little extra pieces? Because I've been thinking about getting one. So curious. Um, I just, I can't run a vacuum on Connor's in the house. The noise scares him. But if the mini vacuum is like, uh, doesn't make a ton of noise, if it's kind of quiet, then I would be interested in that. Let me know if any of you have that. Yeah, I know some people are really, really clean with their workspace. I am clearly not one of those people. All right, so I'm just going to pop my little pieces here in the garbage I have right next to me. Okay, and so what I'm going to do with this next part is I'm going to take my little lacy frame here, and I'm actually going to glue that down with my multi-purpose glue. Um, I think the adhesive sheets are a great use for this one too, actually. 
Um, it could be a less messy alternative. If you do use your glue, you just want to use a little bit of it. You don't need a ton because my border is tight. I don't have too much space to use this. So I'm just going to try to go lightly. Okay. And I'm going to frame in that happy birthday. So I'm going to put that down here. I just like to run my fingers around until it starts to set on something like this particular project. <clears throat> now here, um, I want to stamp my stems. So I'm going to do that really quick. Um, let me see. I'm not sure where I put my scrap paper, so I'm just going to kind of wing it. There's one, there's two, great. Now the one thing that I will say with the black background is that the embellishments are really gonna stand out. Um, but I was thinking, I could either glue these straight down or put them on dimensionals. I was thinking about dimensionals for these. So let's get our layout here. I'm going to leave the backing on my dimensional real quick so I can move these around. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these flat. I'll glue these straight down. We'll do one flower kind of over this way, one over this way. All right, I think I like that spacing for it. Have a little too much glue there, so I'm just gonna Take a little bit of that off. Okay, same thing with this side. Now I decided to put my stems in the back. Um, you might wanna put your stems over top of your leaves and that's totally fine, um, but I'm gonna pop the leaves up on dimensionals too, I think. That's what I'm going to do. Just trying to decide how I want that to look. I do it like that kind of a little bit at an angle. Let's see how it looks with the flowers. That's pretty cute. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna pop that one on. And then don't want to go a little bit lower. I think I like it slightly overlapped. Let's just take a look. Where the single leaf is kind of going inward and the two outer leaves are outer here. Okay. And then let me get these embellishments here. And let's put these down. So I was thinking about putting these literally right in the center of the leaves. 
And then what if we do two smaller ones down here by birthday? Okay, so there's the first one. All right, and then I still have to assemble the one with the white background. So let's let's glue that one together too. Um, it's right here. Okay, so same deal. We're going to pop this up on dimensionals. Okay. I was so afraid I wasn't going to be able to finish my live and I'm not quite done yet, but I'm feeling confident enough. That's why I didn't assemble my card. Because I wanted you to see that little stamped background there in case I had to go. Okay, so here we have this one. And now same thing, I'm going to glue this right down to the base. Or I should say to my um, deckled rectangle layer would probably be the more accurate thing to say there. When I used to edit my videos, I would hear myself saying something and I was like, that is not correct. And I would have to like type in a correction. So don't be afraid to shout it out if you hear me say something that needs to be corrected. Okay, same thing. I'm just gonna kind of run my finger along this. that dries. Okay, so I'm um, coming in with voiceover just at the very end of this video. Um, as I finish up this second card, I just wanted to say if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Um, you can click the button if you would like to get notifications every time I do a new video. So as I've been saying throughout um, the video, I typically do two lives a week and then I post the replays um, right up here on YouTube and uh, I do have a slightly modified schedule but I am hoping to get back to it soon. Um, the other thing is uh, <clears throat> for those of you who do enjoy um, Paper Pumpkin and the Paper Pumpkin alternate videos, uh, just keep in mind that uh, the deadline to subscribe for the June kit is June 10th. And as I'm posting this to YouTube, it is June 9th. So there's just one day left if you want to subscribe for that kit. The add-on is still available um, for the June Paper Pumpkin kit called the Welcome in dies. I will have all of the information in the description box below. And if you have any questions for me anytime, um, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, leave me a comment and let me know which background did you like better for this card? Did you like the white background that I'm finishing up here on the original card? Or did you like the black contrast background um, that we did on the first card in this video? Let me know. All all right. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.